All right, guys, this is another one that won't take real long. Um, this should be, this will be posted on Thursday for you guys, talking about the ozone layer. Ozone layer is uh, in the <coughs> stratosphere, okay, second layer of our atmosphere. It's highly concentrated. Like we said, it's made of three oxygen atoms. So ozone, we, have, we breathe O2. Ozone is O3. So basically, when you for this to be broken down and, and to be able to made into O3, the sun is what breaks it apart. It absorbs light. It absorbs that UV light from the sun. So, just like anything, when it gets too hot, it separates. All right? We we heat up molecules. They spread apart. So when the sun heats up these ozone molecules or the oxygen molecules, it breaks them apart. So now I've got if ozone, if if oxygen we breathe is O2, sun comes in and hits it. It becomes an O1 and an O1. Well, now I've got another O2 floating around. And that O2 binds to the O1, which makes O3. And when you get that, <clears throat> when you see the chemistry of it, and I wish you were here, we could really explain it a little bit more, and we will when you guys get back. Um, that O2 binds to the O1, we get the O3. So it's the oxygen we breathe plus another oxygen molecule, which makes the ozone layer, which we are not supposed to be able to breathe because then it becomes toxic to, toxic to us. Um, chemical that causes ozone depletion. This is the biggest one. It's called CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. We got rid of the CFCs back in the 90s. <clears throat> and since we got rid of the CFCs back in the 90s, the ozone layer in itself has basically repaired itself. And these CFCs, these chlorofluorocarbons, these guys come from, they used to come from refrigerants, um, used to come from coolant, maybe that you would put in your cars, you would put in your AC uh, units at home, uh, where it would come from hairspray, come from a lot of different places where they would come from. Uh, uses propellant and spray cans, deodorants, insecticides, paints. So you see it everywhere. Um, it does live on Earth's surface, but as it lives on, um, and, and these things attach to our Earth's surface in these CFCs, and then as it becomes chemically stable, it stays there, it stays there, and then when the oxygen molecules and the ozone molecules react with it, boom, it breaks it apart. And therefore we can't do it. It says one single chlorine atom in the CFC can destroy 100,000 ozone molecules, which is unbelievable. But like we've said, we've banned CFCs, and since we've banned CFCs, the ozone layer has gotten much better. When you do your ozone layer web quest for this, you're going to see that as the years have progressed, or really over the past 15, 20 years, so the ozone layer <coughs> has gotten much, much better. Uh, the ozone hole, 1985, the ozone layer at the South Pole had thinned from 50 to 98%. Every time in the springtime, our springtime is when this happens, a really late winter for us. <coughs> so March 1997, 45% below normal over part of Canada. So now you're seeing we want that hole to only be over Antarctica and South America. When that hole begins to creep up and become over us, over North America, that's when you see skin cancer rates and all this stuff go through the roof, melanoma cancer, all this because the ozone layer is there to protect us from UV rays from the sun. Because we know that UV rays, like when you put on sunscreen, that's what protects you from getting sunburn. And that's what the ozone layer, it's our natural defense against the sun. Um, during uh, the polar vortex, which is what's going on now, fixing to drop down into the United States. Strong circulating winds over Antarctica. Polar vortex isolates cold air from surrounding warmer air. Our polar vortex comes from the Arctic. This with the ozone layer coming from the Antarctic, so that cold air gets surrounded over that warmer water. The temperatures were below negative 80 degrees. They form these stratospheric clouds. The CFCs then inside those clouds convert into the molecular chlorine. Molecular chlorine is what breaks down the oxygen, what breaks down the O3. We can destroy up to 70% of our ozone layer. Ozone is like very chemically reactive, like we said. UV light reaches Earth easier. It can damage our DNA. That's one, that's one, that's what happens when we talk about cancer. Those, those cells begin to replicate, 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 and we can't do anything about it. Um, Phytoplankton kills single cell organisms. We know how many different animals rely on phytoplankton in our oceans. So therefore, that right there is going to be something um, that affects us. We protect the ozone layer. 87, the group of nations met in Canada. They took action. They took control. Um, they wanted to take action against the control and the production of CSCs. Montreal Protocol um, basically gave us this. 
In 2000, they banned all substances that pose, that pose significance to the ozone. Uh, so it says right here, many years before the ozone will be replenished, we're probably 10 to 15 more years away from it not being really a threat anymore. So it's going to take 20, 30, 40 years since the Montreal Protocol for this to be able to happen. So we just have to make sure that we do our part in protecting the ozone layer. And it's really the industry's part and the people who produce these different types of CFCs and different vaults. So if you'll continue to now work on your assignment for the ozone layer web quest, a few of you completed this as a bonus before we left. If you will just re-upload that assignment because there's only five of you. If you will re-upload that assignment to this one, you will be good to go and your assignment will be finished for the week. <clears throat> Just remember this one is due by, or by Sunday night at midnight. See you guys next week.